Ray McBrien. And this is Out, Out of, of New York. York. Over 70 million people worldwide claim their place of origin to be Ireland. Over 40 million are here in the United States. Woohoo! And if you've ever been to a St. Patrick's Day parade here in New York City, you'll know where a lot of them ended up. So here we are in Times Square, and it is the heart of American theater. As you can see, we got a sign over there that says theater. Theater, yeah, I mean, that's kind of proof. Yeah, it's bona fide, real stuff happening here, right? Yeah. Much of the success is due to Irish influence here in New York. And one of those great big successes is the Irish Repertory Theatre Company. Kieran O'Reilly is co-founder, producer and director and a good buddy of mine. A good buddy of yours? Well, he's, he's a buddy. You've met him once. That's, I, I've, I've met him twice. Okay, whatever. Let's see what he has to say. Are you embarrassing yourself? The cultural capital of the United States the theater capital of the world, New York City, the home of the institution the Wall Street Journal describes as the best theater company in America, the Irish Repertory Theater. This is a little spot of Ireland here in New York City, and it's a place where people, whether they're Irish American, uh, where they want to return to something that they love, or whether it's uh, people who are um, born in Ireland who want to just come home for an afternoon in a mad plane and feel that they're, they're back home without having to get on air with us. Our mission, that we, when we wrote out our mission at the very beginning, was to perform Irish and Irish-American plays professionally but with a native understanding. And that's what we've always tried to bring to the work that we've done here. One of the things that Irish theatre does, it sort of, it transcends nationality. Legends, you know, of the time are, are so many of them are Irish, like Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw, um, John Millington Singh, or Casey, Eugene O'Neill, you know, in American theatre. We have that uh, to pick from, so we have, a, we have a great tradition of Irish theatre, and that's, people appreciate that in New York. It's a theatre town, and, uh, and it's, it's great to be a part of it. give you all the information you need on health insurance, whether you're living here or traveling here. The pitfalls, the costs, and where to get the best deal. Take a look at a clip from our next week's show. One thing to understand, first of all, if you come to New York and you have an accident, you get sick, you require medical care, you don't have any health insurance, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Next week's restaurant, Kennedy's Steak and Seafood Restaurant, your home away from home, minutes away from Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center, a perfect overture to New York's finest entertainment. Ray O'Hanlon, chief editor of the Irish Echo. And author of the book, The New Irish Americans, which chronicles the mass immigration of the Irish to the United States in the late 1970s and 80s. And Ray certainly played his role during that time as Irish representatives were lobbying the White House to get the Morrison and Donnelly visas issued to make Irish immigrants legal. Mm, let's hear what he has to say. Almost a decade ago, I, I, I wrote and finished an, uh, a book called The New Irish Americans, uh, which was published coincidentally on the day I became an American citizen. It deals uh, in a very particular sense with the Irish who came to the United States uh, in the 1980s and early 1990s and what happened to them. What did, what did they experience when they came here? What were the problems, the obstacles and the opportunities? Immigration laws had changed going back to the 1960s and it wasn't just an automatic transfer anymore. Uncle Mickey has, has a company in the Bronx and he'll give you a job. But you wouldn't have a legal basis for that job. So you'd have to work in the shadows, off the books, under the table. And this wasn't going to do for this generation of Irish which, with such high expectations. So they got up and started to fight. And so we had the Donnelly and the Morrison visas. And thousands of Irish got their green cards. Of course, it all changed then in the late 1990s. The Irish economy suddenly started booming. People started going back. Those who stayed here, who are still undocumented, thought that, well, maybe things will improve again. But then history always twists and turns. We had 9-11 and all changed. Many, many undocumented Irish here have been living in the shadows here for years. 
because of new travel restrictions, they can't go back to Ireland, even for the most personal reasons. You know, as journalists, certainly, those of us who work uh, in this area have to sort of believe that, you know, people moving back and forth is a good thing for everybody. Uh, and that's something that we're going to try and sort of report on to reflect and advocate uh, in the years ahead. So there you go. You've all heard of the ginger-haired Irish economist David McWilliams and author of the acclaimed book, The Pope's Children. Well, next week, we're going to hear Professor Santangelo from Columbia University give his American perspective on that story. What I think it comes down to is the fact that Ireland should be very proud. The Irish citizens should be very proud of the fact that their economy was able to blossom and grow in a way that's unprecedented in the area, especially at this point in history. The Irish has had a major impact on music. Bands like the Coors. What? Oh, hold on. Never heard of the Coors. Okay. How about the Cranberries? No, no, no. Not that. You too? That doesn't even sound like a real band. Well, have you heard of any bands like the Prodigals? Yeah, well, or... of course I've heard of the Prodigals. They're those Irish guys, they're now firmly based here in Manhattan, and they're kicking up a storm here. They're played worldwide, but they're more commonly known for their residency here in Paddy Riley's in the east side of Manhattan. And the Irish Times has described them as Big Apple cockiness fused with traditional Irish tunes. The New York Post calls them a kick-ass Irish Celtic band. It's not ass, it's arse, as in Whatever you call it, it's sure to put a fire under your behind. Check it out. It's ours. Oh, whatever. Three old gypsies came to our hall door. One sang high and the other sang low. And the one sang high and the other sang low. And the third sang a black eyed gypsy. Upstairs and downstairs the lady dear and put on her shoes of leather. All of the hue and all of the cry, she's away with the black-eyed gypsy. Late the night. My musical influences are solidly traditional. I grew up listening to traditional and folk music, so I started out with stuff that everybody in America has heard, Fancy Brothers, but also then a guy called Joe Burke who was an, an accordion player from Galway and a bunch of other traditional musicians and I ended up studying with a, an extraordinary traditional fiddler called Liz Carroll as well. I'll start with Jaco Pastorius, Marcus Miller, David Friesen, Ray Brown, all the jazz greats. Charles Mingus is a huge, huge favorite of mine. People have so much fun when they come to the shows and they keep coming back and they get involved in the, in the band and they buy the CDs and they go to the website and read the road stories. And it's, it's really a, it's a lot of fun. She's away with the black eyed gypsy. Well, that's all from us for this week. Out of New York will continue to bring you the latest info on things like fashion, from Barney's to trendy boutiques down in Soho and the village. And don't worry, fellas, we're going to take care of you too. We're going to tell you where to get the sharpest suits from business to casual. We're going to give you the inside track on where New Yorkers go to get away. Some places that are kid friendly and some places that are not so kid friendly. Like a Yankee game in the Boogie Down Bronx, or a view of the skyline from Brooklyn's beautiful promenade, or a boat ride in the Hamptons. We're going to give you the latest entertainment, music, and theater, and we'll have Janine back to review some of the hippest and coolest restaurants in Manhattan. And more current affairs from our Irish media based in New York. And don't forget to check out our website, outofnewyork.tv, which has tons of more fun facts and information. I'm off to take Bridget for a few beers to a real Irish bar, McSorley's in the East Village. I'm going to go home. I'm Bridget Burke. I'm Barry McBride, and this is Out, Out of, of New, New York. York. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just... No, no, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no.